Hi, uh, my name is Lenore von Stein, and this is yet another episode of The Facts. The Facts is uh, art and discussion. This is, tonight is discussion, and uh, we're going to be talking about education. And with me tonight is Bill Crane uh, from the City University of New York, uh, where he teaches psychology and uh, child development. Uh, Lois Weiner uh, from the City, you know, I got to make sure, the City University of New Jersey. Close, New Jersey City University. New Jersey City University, where she teaches a, a secondary, a primary and secondary education. And Alan Fagenberg, uh, also from uh, City College, uh, teaching architecture and education. And tonight, uh, I want to talk about a number of things. Um, uh, this, this, one of these words that's thrown around, well, two, it's two words actually, several syllables, creative thinking. You know, what is creative thinking or critical thinking? Since that seems to be one of the things that is being 86'd from the, from the, from the setup. I just want to throw this out. One of the, I teach too. And uh, I, at one point in my teaching career, because I, I teach pilots and ground crew, and um, and one of the issues with uh, accidents is uh, how 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 much can the pilots think on their feet in a moment of truth, and the militarization of pilotry, um, the 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 routine of it gets in the way when there is one of these moments of truth, uh, and so. And so accidents happen from human error, from not being able to think uh, out of the box. So that's a stupid phrase, but I'm using it. Out of the box. Um, and so the issues for air safety people is how to marry, you know, this kind of discipline that's part of that world with the ability to question authority, with the ability to uh, question authority is a big thing with me, and I think it's, you know it's a really important uh, aspect of. of education of, of living uh, and how to it's it's, it's and, and and here's just one last thing one of the things that that has been talked about is that as as for instance airplanes become increasingly uh, run by computers that the problems that come up will be unique each time so you can't apply the answers that you came up with last time because it'll be a different problem yeah. um, so uh, how do you engender in students uh, critical thinking facilities, creative thinking uh, abilities? Can I say a little bit? Uh, on, we have a farm sanctuary where we rescued farms, and we had a goat that had a baby goat. And when we watched the baby goat, um, the baby goat was constantly improvising. The first time he tried to climb up a rock, he fell down. He he climbed up again, and for good measure, it seemed to be he jumped down backwards. And then he, from then on, he jumped down the same day, jumped down in different ways. He would spin to the right, spin to the left. He was constantly doing stunts. And uh, I began thinking, why is he doing, you know, like a, like he's practicing to be a gymnast or, a, or something <laughs> like that? So much fun. Yeah. And I was wondering, why is he doing that? And then I, as I thought about it, his, the ability to improvise, like you, what you say about the, um, the in the in the crunch, you know, if he was on a if he was up in a mountain and there was a a leopard or a real threat, he could he he has a, would have the capacity to. There's nowhere he couldn't jump. He could do he could jump backwards, forwards. He could jump from rock to rock. He could come up with something because he he could improvise. And I think in children. It was playful. He was just playing all the time. And I think in children, human children, it's, it's uh, largely through play, which we're, we're eliminating in our schools. And see, our if system. we had this goat and we sent them to a school, <laughs> yeah, we, would. we would give him a book to read and test him on what the right way to jump was. And he'd know one way to jump, and he wouldn't have any faith in his right. ability to, to create at the moment. Um, but in play, it's, you know, the kids in make-believe play especially, they try out different roles, they, they play the mother, they play the father, they play the baby, they create new scenarios. It's out of what you call out of the box is good enough. You know, I just, I, I was having a um, discussion with um, a Danish uh, teacher uh, who's also a union member. Uh, in Denmark, the, um, the preschool teachers are mm -hmm. unionized and it's one of the most progressive teachers unions in the world. 
And uh, I think that maybe when you marry teacher unionism and a commitment to young kids, you get a, you're apt to get a very progressive uh, uh, form of, uh, of unionism. Um, but in any case, one of the questions that he raised for, for me is that, you know, in this country we've almost lost play mm -hmm. in schools, even in preschools. I mean, it's one of the most chilling aspects of what's happened to our educational system is that now kids in preschool um, are being given academic work and if nothing else they're taught to do the bubble sheets mm -hmm. right. for standardized testing. But one of the issues that he raised for, he, that we were, he and I were talking about was um, why can't we just say that kids should be able to play? In other words, why do we have to say that play is children's work, which is the way that preschool educators it. have yeah. justified play, is that they've said that play is children's work. And what we've lost is the ability to say that it's okay for kids just to play. Play, play is, is children's good. work? Yeah, yes. that's the rationale. That's, 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 that's the rationale people. that it was given yeah. to try to push back the testing and the push down of academics in preschool is that preschool teachers would say and teacher educators would say that well play is children's work in other words they're learning something they're accomplishing they're learning some that's sort of what that's what bill was saying that they're they're learning something that's important mm -hmm. and this dane this dane said to me why can't we just say that they're playing they're playing, and that's enough. And this actually gets me to um, one thing that I want to say, which is I think it's important in understanding when we defend creativity and we defend critical thinking in education is that we do have a crisis of inequality in public education, in education in our schools, and that there are parents who are very rightfully worried that their kids are going to be cheated because historically they have been cheated. I mean that's that's the yeah, case. Yeah. Poor minority and working class kids have historically in this country not been given equal educational opportunity. And I think that part of the problem that we who who believe that play is important both in and of itself and and play in school that we have to make space for that in schools is that we have to reassure and make the case to parents from communities that have historically been, been cheated of educational opportunity, that this is not an effort to continue to cheat them. Well, I, I agree with that strongly. Mm -hmm. At the same time, play is, is being uh, wiped out no matter what the social class. Yes, We that's have right. a recent a study of, ki of kindergartens, uh, yeah. Ed Miller and Joan Allman, and, and they, they looked at middle classes in Westchester. They looked in, in, the, in, in the cities, they sampled pretty well. Uh, the amount of academics in kindergarten is two or three hours. The amount of test prep is, uh, per, is an average of like almost mm. an hour of test prep and play 30 minutes max for play, often nothing. Often no play at all. No sandboxes, no outdoors activities, nothing. Wow. Kindergarten has just been totally deprived of it and these are across the board. So there's if you believe that play is important for children, partly because they love it, and partly because it comes out of their souls and spontaneity, mm. and partly because it develops their imaginations, mm. and you can make a case for it. Um, well, let's go further. It's a serious. It's it, it. It's mental as well as physical, and I think part yeah, of the dilemma yeah. you have in schools is getting kids at an early age to sit down and be quiet. Yeah. Is destructive. I think this, you know. So what does it do? So it plays into giving all the kids, especially boys, drugs because they become hyperactive and then they get labeled. That's, know, good. That's a good insight. And I think, I think the idea that you're raising is I think play is important and it, do, it doesn't stop at kindergarten or nursery. Right. Play should be inclusive in, in all of our lives. Mm -hmm. Oh, it should. I just bring up kindergarten because right. traditionally no, I agree. It, kindergarten was a playful entry into school. And, well, you know, kindergarten's supposed to, kindergarten's act not serious, it's play. And, right. But it's, it's, next it's going to be preschool and if it isn't already. Well, I think that at, as you, work has become... Yeah. As, as work has become more drudgery, mm -hmm. as people work longer, yeah. mm -hmm. as work extends its tentacles into people's lives, then what we're seeing is schooling both reflecting and reproducing that yep. by our um, 
extending the tentacles mm -hmm. of academics lower and lower and depriving kids of um, experiences to really exercise their imagination. And I, the, the link that I think that what <clears throat> I'd like to hear both um, Bill and Alan talk about is the way that this relates to uh, the consumer society, how consumption, mm -hmm. how consumption replaces creativity. Mm -hmm. and play. Does that, does yeah, that, that sound oh, right to you? It, well, a lot of it is in, to, is in toys. To, is buying stuff. Is buying stuff. That, so they're constantly selling kids. and is, I think it's an enormous industry. I don't remember. I've uh, heard presentations. You probably heard them too. Yeah, Susan Lynn and yeah. others on the, the enormous amount of money that goes into selling. that's made in selling toys. It's like it's practically the center of our economy is selling toys to children, and they, and they, it, it's all appealing and lure, and you know it, it has a great lure. But the toys break, and they, the kids don't play with them, and they don't use any imagination because the toy is built to use to supply the imagination. It makes the sounds, and it's really very boring stuff. It does one thing: you push a button, you get one sound, and and that's pretty much it. it it's shiny and attractive, um, but people who've studied play. Uh, say probably the, the most useful thing is uh, for a child to engage in creative play is to throw away the toy and, and leave the box. Leave the box. So they can, because they can do all <laughs> kinds of things. The box can become a, a, a little house. It can become a, a, a bedroom. It can become a car. It can be, you know, the, the simpler things yeah. uh, allow for the imagination to develop rather than these highly structured um, toys. But the toy, uh, the, the, that, that is part of the commercial. The commercialization of childhood is a major yeah. Theme. You go, you. Yeah, I, I, no, I agree. I think, you know, even the boat happens is though that then you have that and you eliminate play and you eliminate recreation from the school. And then what do you do? So parents who have more money, then they can buy those activities after school. So they can get into dance class and art class and music class and sports and everything. And those really aren't the free play that we're looking at because those two are too structured yeah. and too competitive and too demanding. Mm -hmm. Competitive, yes. Um, there's a wonderful architect, that's what we were talking about before, in Holland named Herman Hertzberger, who does a lot of schools. And one of the things that um, Herman insists on is that his, quote, playgrounds have no equipment in them. <laughs> They're just block walls with sand. Good for him. Yeah. And it's just what you were saying. It's like watching the kids at the seashore. With nothing, they, they are able to challenge and create their own imagination, and that's what innovative play is. And I think that's where critical thinking comes, where they're always questioning things. So, you know, we were down at this, the seashore. So what do kids do everywhere in the world? You build a castle, and the tide is coming in. And you build the walls higher and higher, so you're going to keep that water out. And every one of them knows that it's going to get destroyed, but they're <laughs> going to try to do it anyway. And they repeat this process day after day, year after year. And then you see the kids helping each other. So they, what they figure out? So then they figure, well, what do we do higher? Well, if you bake it higher, you have to make it thicker. Well, if you make it thicker, you put a trench around it. And then how do you drain the water out? And these are real. But you also decorate it. I know, then you, of course. Then you, is it a castle or is it a house? Yeah, it ha you have to give it form. Right. right. So they're designing. They're certainly learning about physics. They're learning about the ocean and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the tides. Yes. They're learning about cooperative play because all the time I see is just kids just join and they don't even know each other and they start playing. And all the stuff that comes out of it is actually quite amazing. And in education, you're right, we, since we can't sell it, it's not worth anything. Another thing is that it's not plastic and they're, they're, de they're developing some connection to the real earth yeah. and the real world, the sand, the water, which most kids don't have. Okay. We, we keep promoting the plastic world for them yeah. and the world of screens. Uh, and. Art of the artificial. Yeah, I, I want to say something about screens, though, because I just read um, a lot of research from a, a, a very, I think, um, interesting and important series of studies from the MacArthur Foundation mm -hmm. that you can download for free from the MIT Press mm -hmm. about adolescents' use of, um, mm -hmm. of uh, digital technology yeah, this is a big issue. and social media. And it's really fascinating. It's really, really fascinating because. Um, what their research indicates is that the kids are really creating social space for themselves that does not exist in schools. Uh -huh. So adults are likely to say, oh, the kids are spending so much time, you know, texting. And, and in fact, 
schools are so repressive now, schools are so repressive, has so, such little space for kids to communicate with one another authentically, to even mm -hmm. share time, right? They've gotten rid of recess. Mm -hmm. They've gotten uh, rid of recess? Oh, yes. In a yes. lot of schools, there's no oh, recess. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I would say in most schools in this... the time for test prep. In, in, in yeah. most schools in this country, they've gotten rid of... Now, it's been intensified because of the budget cuts. They've gotten rid of um, all the classes that Phys, were any... Phys ed goes, art goes. Uh, there's, there's no art in... Uh, or they have it maybe once a week. Yeah, well, it's... You know, it's they never, don't have recess. It's never been a uh, They... Nobody gets a lunch, a real lunch anymore. Right. You know, it's brought in by a, a privatized company that delivers a box lunch True. to the kids, if that's <coughs> what they have. And then they go back... To the grind. You know, they go back to the grind. They have math literacy, math literacy, and then maybe they have social studies. Math the next day, math literacy, math literacy, and then maybe they have science. Math. No, after, uh, it's, it's after maybe 10 or 20 or 30 years of this standards movement and the elimination of gradual elimination of recess and kindergarten and more and more emphasis on tests, is education improved over this time? Is, is there any evidence that? It, no, but, is then getting, it, but then you can bring the kids and the families. Of course, the, laws, the teachers. Is, the laws is right. The purpose is not to improve. That's right, the valid no, it's purpose. Not. The purpose it's is not. to that's get them the ready rhetoric. for. That's yeah. the rhetoric. Is to get and them ready the for rhetoric. McDonald's. And I just want to say this discussion that we've been having about what you were saying about you know toys and play. Uh, we need to think about the about work and about what's happened to work. Well, you because see it as driven. schooling is reflecting, as I said, reflecting and reproducing. Yeah, exactly right. what we see in the workplace. And um, Margaret Haley years ago wrote this, um, she gave this speech, Why Teachers Should Organize, I think it was to the uh, National Education Association, and it was really prescient. Um, she said that if educators fail to take the drudgery out of work, that the drudgery of the workplace would take place in schools. In other words, life in schools would be mm. drudgery. Mm -hmm. She uses that term, drudgery. Mm -hmm. I can't think of a better term, a better word to describe what life in schools is like and what life at work is like for most people. Mm -hmm. Drudgery. So it's and then what people what do people do when they have a little free time people adults what, tv tv not even that so much maybe they go on the computer they shop oh shopping yeah commercial well they shop people yeah, shop yeah, yeah. so in other words the commercialization of childhood is preparation it's so sad. for a life of drudgery a life of drudgery where you don't do anything creative yourself but you shop and you buy these Mass, you know, these uh, mass-produced items from uh, from wherever. But I, I want to say, in a more optimistic note, that it seems to me that this DIY, you know, this do-it-yourself movement among young people, um, this website, Etsy. I don't know if you've seen it. Mm. Well, people make things. You know, young people are very interested now in making things with their hands, like the '60s. Like the 60s, that's right. What did There's this appeal. There's this appeal, like crocheting, oh, like yeah. you know, like yeah. like uh, uh, crocheted hats or cooking or making your own pickles. Or you go online to uh, home. You go online and you see all this advice about how to do almost anything. You know, you can make anything yourself. You can do anything yourself. And I think that that's a rebellion. I think that's the a human rebellion. spirit's fighting back. Yes, I, I think so. that They're the human actually spirit. Actually, using real yarn. <laughs> well, you mean wool, as opposed to as opposed to doing it on the screen. On the screen. Knitting on the screen. I was thinking. I was, I was afraid for a minute screen. you were going to say they're making things on the screen. <laughs> well, I. Is I, there a re are we? In, I don't know. I don't do object to computer gra well, graphics. I do because do we've we've lost touch. In part. I do. We do lost you? touch. Yeah. Oh, I don't. We've lost touch with the real world. In the natural world, we've totally like I ask my students, "What phase is the moon in?" 
no one knows. They don't know what that no means. No one knows. They don't know to look up. They, nobody watches what, you know, they don't know. They they probably if they probably I'd could punch guilty. it out on the computer. <laughs> they, they probably could look it up. They could Google it probably. But I, I think plead guilty. Just, it's a, I no, plead it's guilty. Me, it's like like, and Helen got me started this because of this beautiful beautiful description of a child, children at the beach. Yeah. And they're you and can't something see that on screen. And it's not all their own ideas either. It's 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 the ocean comes and teaches right. them things. Right. Now, it sounds if like, I have one to say, are you a luddite? Yes. <laughs> no question about it. No question about it. I was going to say, I, I, I was sniffing. Uh, I, I think but it's getting very serious, the, the alienation from the natural so, world. So what, and even from other kids, if you're going to, it's all going to be to the so screen. I don't, I don't, I don't think that that's true about alienation from other <laughs> okay, kids in the social media. I, I disagree with uh, yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, I, kind of, I disagree too. Um, but looking, you know, let, let's. Uh, this might be undoable, but you know, like sci-fiing it, uh, the, the 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 escape, the 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 steps that go, you know, this we commodify our our, our ourselves, each other, what we do, um, and when we make art, it's 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 often silly, you know, imitation stuff, and um, not that that wasn't something that we've always done a certain amount mm -hmm. of, and uh, but. Uh, you know, one of the things that you mentioned was that the internet is the is one of the ways this out of this of this particular you know tunnel, this hall of mirrors that we're you know that as 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 the as our as our betters uh, arrange us. Uh, so, um, what are some of the other ways that or or can you? How do you think? Not 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 even that exists. Yet you know, I'm, I'm asking for your imaginations to you know. What, you know, a hundred years from now, or well, one hundred and ten years, or how many? You know, to to escape Ooh. this 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 you know very clear f fascist you know stuff that's going on. Commodification. Commodification of us. Of everything. Yeah, well, and it's authoritarianism that's so that's so prevalent. I I I, uh -huh. I find because my work is. Um, I teach people who are teachers, who've come back to school to get graduate degrees. So mostly the people that I'm working with and I'm teaching are people who are teachers. And I find that when I talk about um, their students, or when I talk when I talk about students in a way that's um, real, for instance, when I say to them, "Well, you know, school is boring." <coughs> Uh, they're they're stunned to hear anybody say that school is boring, and yet they all agree with me. Mm -hmm. So they're first stunned, and so I think that one of the things we have to do is we have to speak truth to power. Absolutely, we have to shows like and this hold on are, to our jobs at the same time. Well, as much as we can, <laughs> but we have to say we have to state these. We have to state these. Realities. The emperor's new clothes, huh? Yeah, we have to yeah, really state I agree with these you. realities. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, he, because people don't, people aren't used to hearing it. We live in such a controlled environment because of the corporate media um, that it's very important that people just be honest. Mm -hmm. Well, try speaking out against online instruction, which is coming increasingly in the high in the higher education you got her <laughs> I teach an online class okay Bill and I teach an online class and uh, okay and pretty soon you want yeah I want to know what's going to happen not in, in 10 years yeah. I don't see oh, I think I think it's given very few teachers it's everything is going to be online well there are two two separate issues well, that's a one it's, is it's the technology very fast. it is one is the technology and the other is the society's use of the technology and i want to separate right. between those two things uh, but i just want to point out are there going to be human beings looking at other human beings face to face or and, and do you see that as a pro this evap this evaporation of this do you see that as a yeah. problem we're, yeah. gonna, we're, gonna, we're, yeah. we're getting close to the end of, okay. the, of our wonderful uh -oh. discussion. Okay. Uh, but we're not at the end yet. I'm just, you know, we've got like two and a half minutes oh. left to go. So we should talk to end things up rather than to open things no. I, I think that the I think that the use of technology um, has to be controlled and that it's 
political decisions have to be made in the public yeah. good about the uses of technology. But I think that it's important that we understand the, um, I think, the emancipatory potential uh, of technology and its pedagogical uses because there are things that I can do in teaching an online class that I cannot do in a face-to-face -face class. I can bring together somebody from northern New Jersey and southern New Jersey and have a guest speaker from British Columbia in my online class and I can't do mm -hmm. that in a face-to-face okay, -face class and that's agree. very exciting. Okay, I remember a quick anecdote when I was an insecure freshman I remember um, getting up the nerve to raise my hand and, and make a point. And I remember this professor's face still looking at me and, and thinking and thinking while I spoke and taking me very seriously and nodding. And it, and it made, a made a huge difference in my whole life that this distinguished professor was sitting there listening with all his might to hear what I had to say and was nodding and saying, very, that's very thoughtful. I would, I'd reinforce, I think, I, see, I agree with you, it's a tool, it's a machine, and it depends how it's used. And I think the trend, certainly, with those in control is to use it to eliminate all of us, no question about it. Mm -hmm. But I see with my architecture students, on the one hand, I get very nervous because they're all working on their computers doing everything. I say, oh, they're not talking to each other, they're not. But then what happens is I also see the opposite is when somebody says, come here, I'm having a problem, could you help me out? And all of a sudden, something that was so separate is now turning into a group discussion where they really are talking to each other about really important issues. And Ladies I think that's where we come in to facilitate that communication. Right. We're in the, we're in the last 30 seconds, and so uh, I want to thank Bill. I want to thank Lois. I want to thank Alan. I want to thank all the crew. I want to, and I am. You know, I'm not just pretending. And, uh, and so uh, thank you for joining us tonight, and as always, we'll be back.